Brother lads, welcome back to Kosasna Podcast. My name is Kosasi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into the latest around Arsenal. David Dry has agreed a five-year deal uh, with Arsenal. Arsenal are now in talks with Brentford to agree a price, and he will be an Arsenal player probably in the next few days. Florian Balogun has told Arsenal to reduce his asking price and let him go after Inter Milan walked away from negotiations, thinking the deal is actually very very impossible to do we're gonna be diving into Florian Balogun and why I think Arsenal really uh, eventually have to let him go because of his mentality but then also we'll be diving into the David Dreyer deal because it is actually coming closer to the end than we expected hit the like button subscribe the podcast as well Fabrizio Romano on it again providing us with those big big stories uh in this evening let's get this video to 500 likes I want your thoughts on Florian Balogun and um and and what you think about him going out in the media and saying Arsenal should let me should let me go they should reduce the asking price they're asking for too much money um it shows that the player doesn't want to be there um in my opinion that is what it initially shows uh, I do not care if he's better than Eddie Nketiah. I do not care. It's, it's the same with Mikel Teta. It doesn't matter if you're better than Eddie. It doesn't matter if you're better than uh, Gabriel Jesus in finding the back of the net. If you're not disciplined enough, if you're not patient enough, if you're not willing to um, ride with the rest of the team, I kind of feel like Florian Balogun has blown his way and it's time for Arsenal to take the money and bite the bullet. But I want your thoughts there in the comment box below. Right, let's start off with this, uh, with those two big stories from Fabrizio Romano. Uh, first and foremost, he has confirmed that David Dreyer has agreed a five-year deal uh, with Arsenal and now Arsenal are talking to Brentford to get the deal done. Now, Brentford have been informed by uh, David Dreyer, who is actually pushing actively to get out of the team that he wants to join Arsenal alone, and therefore they should agree a price with Arsenal. Like I said in my earlier video today, this th that really puts... Brentford. This still puts Brentford in a very precarious situation. They are actually between a hard place and a rock. Why? First and foremost, they, they, are, they have a player that doesn't want to be there. And you don't want to keep a player that doesn't want to be there. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. Secondly, they're asking for too much money in a player whose contract is actually running down this summer. And thirdly, I think they've already told the whole market that they're willing to sell and the player is for sale. So I think that the relationship between Brentford and Dave Dry has been broken. Um, the, the, the attempted efforts of them getting a lot of money, I think they were you know, primarily based on the fact that they thought he would sign a new deal, which eventually is not going to happen. They also thought that a desperate goalkeeping, uh, goalkeeper needing club was going to come in and try to pay over the odds. Chelsea maybe, Tottenham maybe, or probably Bayern. But, but you know, one thing we've seen in this market is that Many clubs do not hold goalkeepers uh, in very, very high regard. Many, many clubs are, not, are still not willing to spend upwards of 25 million euros uh, on a goalkeeper. Chelsea are close to agreeing a deal uh, with uh, Brighton for Robert Ch Sanchez. I think he's also from Spain, 19 million euros. Um, Bayern have gone to Bonu, the goalkeeper at Sevilla. Uh, that could cost them probably around 20 to 25 million euros, um, according to my understanding. And um, Spurs decided to sign uh, v Vicario, some guy called Vicario, in their goal rather than pay 40, 40 million euros for uh, David Dreyer. So what Brentford ha have to understand that all the, all the conditions they had predicted are actually not going to happen. You're not going to get a team that is desperate to pay 40, 40 million euros for your goalkeeper, and you're also not going to get a new deal uh, from David Dry. He's not going to sign it. So I think we do have a very, very big advantage and an upper hand in this one. The players actively pushing to sign for Arsenal. Personal terms are great. Five-year deal laid on. Um, it, it just looks smooth. It really, really looks smooth. But let's wait and see if uh, Arsenal can actually go and get the price uh, grade. I still think 26 million euros to 35 million euros, that is where the deal will be done. 
I'll be very, very surprised if Arsenal actually go above that. Because if you're signing David Raya at 27 years of age, you're likely to sell him at 40 with um, probably three years left on his deal uh, to another club for around 45 million euros. So I still think Arsenal need to be very, very, uh, you know, very clever in these negotiations so that we can make a profit in the future when we sell it. Because I don't think we're going to keep two goalkeepers that are really good we are not going to keep them satisfied and therefore we will not keep them in the same side for like five years. I'll be very surprised if Mikel Arteta does that. The only way, by the way, we can do that is if we can, one, qualify for the Champions League for every single year for the next 10 years. Um, that is number one. But then number two, if we can win silverware. If we start that winning spree, win something the next season, win something the, the season before that, then probably you can keep your best players because they will be contented. They're getting the money. They're also getting the medal. So why not keep around? Why not just keep around? But anyway, Arsenal have done a very good job. Five-year deal agreed uh, by David Dreyer, reported by Fabrizio Romano, stamped in. Arsenal have also sold Austin Trusty to uh, Sheffield United. I reported that this deal was closed. It is now a final done deal. Five million pounds is what Arsenal will be receiving uh, from Sheffield United, and the boy will be joining the Premier League side. I mean, what a career for him. Comes from the Major League Soccer, goes to the Championship, um, and then crosses over to uh, the Premier League for Sheffield United. I think he will be earning himself some good money as well. Yeah, that's a good deal. That's a good deal for Austin Trusty. Let's hope Matana's deal to Nottingham Forest will also actually come through. Now, let's talk about Florin Balligan, who is actually very, very annoying at this point in time. So, Initially, I was on the side of Florian Balogun right from the start because Arsenal failed to give him that opportunity. Arsenal failed to give him that chance uh, to shine, to thrive as a, uh, as a footballer. And I said, if you've given Eddie Nketiah all these chances, if you've given Eddie all this time uh, to prove himself and he's actually failed to do that, why don't you give some time to Florian Balogun? Why don't we give some time to Florian Balogun and see what he's actually going to provide? But it looks like Florian Balogun is very, very far away uh, from where Arsenal are thinking. He's very far away from uh, where we are. So first and foremost, Florian Balogun has made it very, very clear that he won't be a, a third-choice striker. Now, he has also made it clear that he doesn't want to be a second-choice striker. So literally, that means that he wants to be a starter. He wants to start uh, for, for Arsenal. He wants to start for, for the club if he's going to stay. I don't know what you, your thoughts are on Balogun starting every single day because Gabriel Jesus signing for Arsenal last summer, it, it was on the promise that he will be our main number nine. It was on the promise that he will be our starter. And I don't think he's done anything wrong. I don't think he has done so many things wrong for us to go, okay, we need Balogun to start. I, th I still think Jesus and Balogun can be on the same level. Jesus just needs to work on his chance finishing he needs to work on his uh, you know xg uh you know finishing he's having a massive murder of his xg so i still think I, I still look at them as go uh, as players on the same level but my problem with florin balligan is the yapping the mouth and the impatience and the intolerance so he's looking at this arsenal side and it has changed we have to agree. Arsenal have drastically changed uh, in the last three windows. We've brought in quality players, we've built a quality side, and we've brought in players that love the project and believe in the project. Players that want to be here. It's been a very key factor in the recruitment process of Edu and Mikel Arteta to players in this side. You must be committed, you must believe, you must be patient because uh, it's, it's a side that is young, is a side that is going to be very competitive. So you must be patient that if there is a player starting ahead of you, just like we've seen Fabio Vieira, Emil smith Rowe, Gabriel Martinelli, and all these other players, if there is a player starting ahead of you, literally it means that you're not yet there. You're not yet good enough. You just need um, some time off, right? Just to 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 find your pace, and and then you can you know be, you can be the player that you want to be. We've seen it with with, with William Saliba. Now Balogun has actually told Arsenal to cut their asking price. Can you imagine? Balogun has told Arsenal to cut their asking price and let him go to whoever is going to sign him. So this is where the story comes from. 
According to Fabrizio Romano, Inter Milan have made Florian Belligan their number one choice, but they are now looking at other options, including Gianluca Scamacca at West Ham because they feel the asking price um, for Florian Belligan from Arsenal is very, very high. So Arsenal still wants above £45 million, and Inter are, are, are preparing around £30 to £35 million. So um, the news reached Florian Belligan that Arsenal are actually pricing you out of a move he was angry and is now according to ben jacobs he's told arsenal reduce my asking price because i don't want to be here now this actually puts us in a very difficult situation i don't think anyone at arsenal Mikel Arteta, edu um richard garlic or anyone is interested in keeping a player who doesn't want to be there i think that is one thing that has been very very clear it's the same thing with Granny Jaka. Um, Mikel would have loved him. He would have wanted him to stay for another season. But, you know, Jaka said, look, I, I want to move on. I, I want to go. And Mikel said, right, I'll go get Declan Rice and Kai Havis, and then you will walk out of the door. The moment those deals were done, it was, you know, inevitable. Jaka had to go and eventually left. But again, puts us in a very difficult position because we want to have enough um, power in negotiations. So what Arsenal are trying to do here is not price Balogun out of a move. We are trying to agree a deal that is sustainable for us. I really like what Dembele has done with for, for Barcelona and with PSG. So Dembele has agreed personal terms with PSG. And PSG had an option to trigger his release clause of around 50 million euros on the before the 1st of August. The moment that debt actually... Um, uh, past it meant that um they psg now have to sit down and talk to fc Baka to agree a deal with them dembele has re, uh, has remained very calm very um respectful and he actually wants to go to psg after Baka getting enough money that they feel is a little bit fair is fair to them so he doesn't care if Baka get 40 million euros or 70 million euros as long as um, as long as Baka are contented, and it is fair, that is what I think Florian Balogun needs to do. He he needs to communicate to his agent that um I don't want to be there, which he's actually done. I don't want to be part of this Arsenal side, which he has actually made very very clear. He just needs to wait a little bit, work with his agent, tell his agent to work on a couple of deals. That's what I I would have expected. He should be working on a couple of deals like um. Inter Milan are not the only, uh, only club interested. Inter do not have the money to pay for, for him. Like 45 million euros, they don't have that, that money. For a player who scored 21 goals last season, Rasmus Holland going for 70 million euros, I, st I still think Arsenal deserve some time to negotiate a good deal. If Rasmus Holland is 75 million euros plus 10 in add-ons, surely Balogun should go for half that. Fran Balligan should go for half of the 85 million euros Rasmus Holland has cost. So Arsenal need time and we need someone to shut up in that camp so that we can get the deal over the line. A deal that fa you know, tr you know, uh, you know, favors us, but also a deal that favors Florian Balligan. Why I think Arsenal now need to sell Florian Balligan, whether we get a striker or not, the mentality is broken. And the attitude is broken as well. So we've heard from Edu that there have been so many players um, Arsenal have been trying to sign. And we didn't sign them because their mentality was actually broken. Because they, they didn't care about being at Arsenal or not being there as long as their salary was coming through the door. They didn't care whether Arsenal won the title or didn't as long as they were paid. And Edu said, that is not the mentality I want. I want players that are going to, you know, personify the journey. I want players that are going to feel we are Arsenal. We are the Arsenal. We are not playing for Arsenal, but we are the Arsenal. The, he needs, we need players that identify as the club. So when you hear Mikel Arteta speak, and you hear Saka speak, and hear Odegaard speak, they, they also one thing our fans not the fans of the club they say our fans 
don't deserve this or our fans deserve this we we thank the supporters with we, we thank our supporters for the so they identify as the club and they look at the uh the support from the fans as direct support to them i think mm-hmm. flan Balagan is gone i, I think Balagan is not that anymore okay so for a player who has seen what has happened with William Saliba, if he really wanted to be there, if he really identified as Arsenal, he would definitely be thinking in his head, why don't I sign a new deal, get another loan deal, and probably achieve what Florian Balligan has achieved. Because if he sat down with Mikel, and Mikel truly gives him his word that you're in my plans, but you have not arrived yet, which is actually very true. I don't think Florian Balligan is, uh, has arrived yet. 20, 21, 22 goals, yeah, that's very impressive. Yeah, that's very impressive. But um, he's not yet there. You look at the, the, the development at this club. You look at goalkeepers like Raya being wanted over Aaron Ramsdale. It shows you that the development of this club is at a very terrific speed. So I don't think Balagan is there. I don't think it's just the guy that comes in to complete the puzzle and score 30. He might score the 30, but I don't think he's, you know, he's developed to the levels of Zichenko, Rice, Odegaard. I don't think he's done that. So for me, it's, um, it, it's hurting but it's the reality. We've got to bite the bullet. We've got to bite the bullet. We've got to sell him. Sell him. We've got to let him go. And for me, it should be for good money. 40 and above, sell him. Right? 40 and above, sell him. Because this is the time for, for us to get the most amount of, of money out of him. If you don't get the most out of him next season, it's going to be one year, one year left on his deal. Someone wants to give you 17 million euros. So Arsenal need to really, really get the money when they can. But I'll see you right in the next one. I don't want to rant a lot about Balagan because I like him as a player a lot as well.